Now, I'm pretty sure that you know that Apple offers different variants of each series of its Apple Silicon. So going back to the M1, we had the vanilla M1, then we had the M1 Pro, the M1 Max, and then the M1 Ultra. Since then, we've been through the M2 series, the M3 series, and we're currently in the middle of the M4 series. Now, Apple has just launched a brand new ultra variant of one of its processors and it might not be the one that you're expecting so in this video i want to cover this new ultra chip and explain to you what it is so if you want to find out more please let me explain okay then so we're going to be looking at the uh, m3 ultra and of course the m3 ultra comes after the M3, the M3 Pro and the M3 Max. Of course, we're already into the M4 series and we'll talk more about that in a moment. But we do have a new chip in the M3 series, the M3 Ultra. So what is the M3 Ultra? Well, it combines two 3 nanometers. So it's made by TSMC on 3 nanometer M3 Max dies. So basically, take an M3 Max, you stick another one down on the same chip and you double everything. And they are connected together using a very clever ultra fusion packaging architecture including an interconnect that can provide up to 2.5 terabytes a second of low latency interprocessor uh, bandwidth and so you get a total of 184 billion transistors so this is a monster piece of silicon two m3 max chips side by side fast interconnect lots and lots of transistors mega piece of hardware now what do you get inside of that well you get up to and of course with a lot of these apple configurations if you order for example the new uh, mac studio that they've announced with the m3 ultra depending on how much money you buy depends on what exactly you're going to get but up to 32 cpu cores with 24 performance cores and eight efficiency cores and that in multi-core uh, performance is going to be one and a half times faster than the m2 ultra and one point eight times faster than the M1 Ultra. You also get the largest GPU that Apple has ever put in a chip. So it's an 80 core up to again, up to 80 core uh, GPU cores, which is two times faster than the M2 Ultra and two and a point six times faster than the M1 Ultra. So if you want a 32 core CPU with an 80 core GPU, this is the way to go. Now, this is all very interesting uh, in terms of numbers, but there is an important thing to you. If you've watched my video on the NVIDIA digit system, that is aimed at people who want to do machine learning locally. And the M3 Ultra fits into that same niche. So it's good at running LLMs. Now, it in the text I've received, it does say that it has machine learning accelerators in the CPU. And that's true in the sense, of course, that any type of dot product operations that you get in the CPU is going to uh, improve that. Now, the M4 has specific machine learning accelerators that were part of one of the ARM v9, ARM v9 9.2, I think, uh, extensions. Now, I'm going to find out, try to find out some more about whether there's anything from the 8. Now, of course, this remember this ARM v8. This is an ARM v8 process. The M4 is an ARM v9. This is ARM v8. But they can still add, of course, various vector things to the CPU. I'm going to try and find out more about it. But the text I've got says it has got ML accelerators in the CPU. It's got the most powerful GPU. It's got a 32-core neural engine, which is the biggest one. There's 16 is basically the standard across most of the M4. Uh, sorry, because most of the M chips, not even just the M4, but the M chips. This has got a 32. And here's the important thing. Large language models are, of course, really bottlenecked by the memory bandwidth because you're loading up a model that is you know you've seen my videos here on this channel i hope you know maybe four gigabytes but eight 16 32 150 170 gigabytes just the model in ram and so how quickly you can access that model in ram the bandwidth is hugely important and here you've got over 800 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth now, that means, and this is according to Apple, you can run an LLM with over 600 billion parameters. You know, when I've been doing things here on this channel, we're running ones with 9 billion parameters, 3 billion parameters. Or I might bump up to 14 billion parameters, 600 billion parameters directly on device. So not up in the cloud, but directly on your device. Of course, you need the memory to do that. 
the uh, the base Mac Studio has 96 gigabytes of memory, which wouldn't be enough for that 600 billion parameter model, even with quantization. But you can configure it up to 512 gigabytes. Can you believe that? A, a, a desktop machine that you can have at home with 512 gigabytes. It's not going to be cheap, but wow, that is absolutely uh, amazing. The M3 Ultra brings the most capable implementation of Thunderbolt 5 to the Mac Studio with each Thunderbolt 5 port supported by its own custom design controller directly on the chip. And I'd love to find out some more information about this controller that they've added to the M3 Ultra here. I think they've also added it to uh, one of the M4s because you can get Thunderbolt 5 on the Mac Studio with the M4 chip in it as well. But the point is this, is sometimes you do pay an Apple tax when you're trying to up the internal storage. Uh, and it would be nice if you could just use kind of external storage and plug it into a USB-C stroke Thunderbolt 5 port, because uh, they use the same physical connector. Uh, and then you can just use your external uh, storage at roughly the same speed you get it for the internal. So. OK, you might have some cables and some dockings and, you know, whatever, but you're not going to have to pay. You can get it cheaper. That's the bottom line, but still at the same speed. So that's really interesting. See what I can find out about that. Now, here's the thing. Why are we getting an M3 Ultra now when we're well into the M4 series? Let's just do a quick rewrite. You started with the M1 back in 2020. And then as things progressed, it took quite a while, but we got an M1 Pro and an M1 Max, and then by 2022, so of course Apple were just starting, it is their first desktop process. Of course, you had the uh, silicon in the iPhones and the iPads before that, but by 2022, we had the M1 Ultra, and then we had the M2 range. So the M2 series started, you got so after the Ultra for the M1, then you got June, then into 2023, you get the Pro and the Max. And then another year after the vanilla M2, you got the uh, to the M2 Ultra. Brilliant, everything looks great. Then we suddenly get the M3, and Apple interestingly released the M3, uh, the M3 Pro, and the M3 Max all at the same day. And I got a video about that here on this channel. They launched it on the same day. You get all three of them. And then me and probably a lot of other people were thinking, great, we're going to get an M3 Ultra sometime during 2024. That didn't happen. In fact, in 2024, we got the M4, the M4 Pro and the M4 Max, which were absolutely brilliant to get those. And we thought, OK, that means there's not going to be an M3 Ultra. There were lots and lots of different rumours circulating on the internet about why was that not happening in terms of chip yields, in terms of that interconnect, in terms of the caching architecture. Lots and lots of rumours going around. But now here we are in March of 2025 and we're getting an M3 Ultra. Not an M4, but an M3 Ultra. And that does raise a question, will there be an M4 Ultra? Will there be an M4 Ultra in 2026? Or even later, or is the M3 Ultra kind of, you know, topping out and maybe Apple are going to take a different strategy? We don't know. It's just interesting. But here we are, out of sequence, as it were, the M3 Ultra. But what a beast it is. So this is my mock-up. These three pictures are from Apple. I've basically been a little bit of photo editing. I've taken this one and flipped it and put an interconnect in between it there. So there's the M3 uh, Ultra, basically two M3 Max chips put side by side with a fast uh, interconnect between them. So what does that mean for transistors? Well, I did mention earlier on, look, the M1, 16 billion transistors, M3, uh, sorry, M1 Pro, M1 Max, then you just get more and more ultra 114 billion transistors. And why is because basically these have all got more and more CPU cores and GPU cores. We'll go into the configuration in a minute. So you go down this list and of course they keep growing, keep growing. And here we are at the uh, M3 Ultra, 184 billion transistors, the biggest chip uh, Apple has ever made. Now, we don't really know the size of the M4 in terms of transistors. Some rumors it's 28 billion transistors. That would be kind of in the line of how we're seeing the growth here between each generation, 4 billion, 5 billion kind of bump each time. Uh, and then that would, if you extrapolated that, that would mean that it's around 50, maybe 60 billion for the Pro, 95 billion uh, for the Max uh, and so on. And of course, we don't have an Ultra yet. So... 
lots of information here, but basically the difference between the vanilla one, the Pro, the Max and the Ultra is basically the number of CPU and GPU cores. So if we go back way back to the beginning, the M1, you've got four and fours, eight cores, eight core GPU. Then the Pro, you've got an extra uh, set of um, performance cores. You now got eight performance cores but and two efficiency cores. So it pushes it more towards performance cores, 16 uh, GPU. Then with the Max here again, eight plus two, but even bigger GPU. And then the Ultra, you double everything. This is basically always the doubling of that. And then when you come down here to the M3, then of course you start with the normal M3, eight cores, a 10 core GPU, and then as you get here to the max version, you're looking at the maximum of 12 uh, performance cores, four efficiency cores, 40 core GPU, and you basically double that. You can either have 20 or 24 performance cores, eight efficiency cores, and 60 or 80 uh, GPU cores. Now, if you compare that to the biggest M4, well, that's 12 performance cores and eight efficiency cores. So you can see that the Ultra is going to have way more cores, even if the individual cores on the M4 are slightly faster, because, of course, it's uh, the latest generation, higher clock speeds, ARM V9. You're still not going to be able to compete with 16 cores uh, here to 24 cores here and 40 cores here to 80 cores here. So even though this is one previous generation, you're still in terms of pure multi-threaded uh, abilities and GPU abilities and it's also worth mentioning because they're putting this in the Mac studio they've also bumped up the stuff around the video encoding and decoding they've doubled a lot of the resources so that video encode and decode uh, is much quicker on the M3 Ultra because of the dedicated video encode engines uh, inside of the chip and of course in RAM as always you know you get your vanilla M3 you can get it in you know, the, you know, the laptop, the desktop, whatever, and you can get 24 gigs. And as you go up the system, M3 Max 128 gigs, and that's kind of what the NVIDIA Digits is going to be offering you. But now the M3 Ultra up to 512 gigabytes. Absolutely uh, astounding uh, amount of RAM built into that system. Now, as I said earlier, memory bandwidth is absolutely vital when it comes to running large language models and, of course, many, many other computing workloads. And again, we see an increase of um, the performance, the memory bandwidth performance, as we go up through the series. And a lot of that to do with the fact the number of memory controllers increases uh, to handle the larger amounts of RAM and also to provide you with that max bandwidth. So we're down at 100, 120 for the vanilla ones. And then this was an interesting one. When you got jumped up here with the M4 Pro, big jump here, 273 giga bytes per second, 150 on the M3 Pro. But when you get to the M3 Max, that was a good jump there. Again, depends on the CPU configuration exactly. 300 or 400 gigabits per second. The M4 Max, 410, 546 gigabytes per second. Sorry, I said gigabits a second there earlier, gigabytes per second. So uh, again, the M4 there is faster, but not by much. But here, you get 819 gigabytes per second, regardless of the CPU configuration, whether you go with the, the 20 performance cores or the 24 performance cores, you're still going to get this uh, maximum, uh, you're still going to get this high uh, bandwidth there, 819 gigabytes per second. And of course, when you're running an LLM, that's absolutely fundamental. You know, you're just going to double, forget the computing power of the GPU, the CPU, the, the neural engine, just by doubling that bandwidth, you're going to significantly improve the uh, speed of an LLM there. And so let's look at some of the benchmarks. These are all the benchmarks provided by Apple themselves, and they're really comparing themselves to themselves. They're not comparing it here to other PCs or other systems. This is all Apple compared to Apple. So the Mac Studio with the M3 Ultra, it has 16.9 times the speed of what? A, a Mac Studio with an M1 Ultra. That's the baseline. The M2 Ultra was eight times faster than the M1. And so the M3, so you can see double basically, and that's what you'd expect. So it's doubling the, uh, the performance there. And looking at other things, 3D rendering, comparing to an Intel Mac Pro, that was the one they're using. So two times faster with the M1 Ultra, 3.2 times faster with the M2 Ultra, six times faster with the M3 Ultra. And then video editing, again, remember they've got the additional uh, hardware encoding and decoding there. So this is two times faster than Intel Mac, almost three times, 
almost, and then 3.8 to 4. Now, interesting, not so much of a big jump there. As I said, there is some additional encoders in the M3 Ultra, but uh, it's interesting. If you are primarily doing video editing, this may not be the upgrade you're looking for. Uh, if you're doing LLM or machine learning stuff, certainly is going to be the upgrade you're looking for. So you have to pay, take your choice there. Finally, for software developers, again, the baseline here is an Intel uh, Mac Pro, twice as fast on the M1 Ultra, 2.2 times as fast on the M2 Ultra, 3.3 uh, times as fast on the M3 Ultra. Again, number of cores, of course, there are other things that take into account there, and that's the speed of the I.O. and so on. But if you're doing compiling, and they basically take an open source project, they said here, and compile it in Xcode, how long does it take? Obviously, it'd be a big project, not just one that's uh, you know a couple of files. Uh, and you can see bigness. So if you are a heavy duty uh, app developer, then you're going to find a benefit in going to the M3 Ultra. This is kind of my own homegrown uh, end screen graphic here. Apple didn't provide one at the time that I made the video. So here is all four chips in the M3 series. These are all three nanometer ARM V8 64 bit, of course. So 25 billion transistors in the vanilla M3, all up to 184 billion transistors in the M3 Ultra, starting down the vanilla one, eight core uh, CPU, all the way up to a 30 core uh, CPU in the M3 Ultra, 10 core GPU, all the way up to an 80 core, so eight times as many GPU cores in the M3 Ultra, and then up to 24 gigs in the M3, all the way up to 512 uh, gigs in the uh, possible of uh, you don't have to buy that one uh, in the m3 ultra so apple here trying to give you uh, the chip that you want for the workload that you want for the price point that you want in the form factor whether that's a, a laptop or or a desktop uh, that you want so there you go out of sequence we weren't expecting it but the m3 ultra uh, and it looks like a beast Okay, that's it. Love to hear your thoughts on the M3 Ultra in the comments below. Do tell me all about it. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kinds of videos, then I invite you to stick around by subscribing to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.